Immunotherapy is a newer type of anti-cancer treatment that has actually really revolutionised the treatment of many cancers. It works by harnessing the body's own immune system to fight the cancer. Although it's given in a very similar way to chemotherapy, it actually works in a very, very different way in the body and therefore has very, very different side effects. I often describe the way immunotherapy is working to patients as taking the brakes off our immune system so that our immune system can attack the cancer. What this can then do is cause inflammation in certain areas of your body, which is what leads to side effects. Side effects can occur any time, weeks into treatment, months after treatment, or even after you finish treatment. And because of that, it can be easy to forget that the symptoms you're having are potentially related. Immunotherapy can be given with chemotherapy and if that's what you're going to have your doctor will let you know that and talk you through that and also discuss with you the specific chemotherapy side effects. When you are about to start your treatment for immunotherapy we'll give you a really long list of side effects which are possible and certainly when you do the consent process you'll hear lots of different side effects. Nobody gets them all and lots and lots of patients actually tolerate treatment really well. Lots of people continue to work and continue to do normal things that they want to do while they're on treatment. Many patients experience little to no side effects. This may depend on the exact type of immunotherapy you're having, whether you're having one drug on its own or whether you're having a combination of immunotherapy agents. The key thing to remember about immunotherapy side effects is, is that it's really best to let your clinical team know at the earliest time point that you experience something because so often it's much easier to deal with something in its early stages you must reach out to us. And the reason why it's important is while they're well tolerated, there are some serious and potentially life-threatening side effects. But if we intervene early, we can give steroids. They're often given orally, not intravenously, if it's early enough. And steroids are immune suppressive. So you give the steroids until the side effects have died down. You then stop the steroids and you make sure the side effects don't come back. And then you can re-give the same immune therapy, which was working previously, with caution, of course, and often that side effect won't come back a second time. Once you start your treatment, we're going to ask you to be monitoring your side effects at home. One of the things that we'll give you is a cancer record book. This is a really good tool for recording your symptoms and you can score them so that you can then tell us how you've been feeling once you come back for your next treatment or if you need to be seen more urgently you can tell us exactly why. The other thing we'll give you is a alert card with a telephone number on it with a 24 hour a day helpline. For patients having combination immunotherapy, diarrhoea can be quite a common side effect. Um, one might expect that up to half of patients might get some symptoms of diarrhoea. In patients who are having single drug immunotherapy, that's far less common, but still possible. If you do develop mild diarrhoea at home, we do encourage you to keep yourself well hydrated, take your anti-diarrheal medication like loperamide, restrict your fibre intake, uh, fruit and veg, and take lactose-free dairy. It's important to record the number of times you're going and you can use your cancer record book to do this. If, for example, you were having your bowels open more than four times a day, we would want to hear from you. Also, other warning signs when you have diarrhoea is not just the frequency, you could have associated pain in your tummy, bleeding in your poo, or you could even be vomiting, and those are much more serious and you must contact your clinical team. Another common side effect of immunotherapy is a rash. So it can be a bit of redness in the skin and it sometimes can be itchy. Uh, it's important that you make a note of it. And if you have a mobile phone, sometimes it's helpful to take a photo and send to your team to monitor it. Um, occasionally, if it is itchy, we recommend that you take over-the-counter antihistamines. However, a lot of the time, your team will be able to advise and also prescribe some tablets to help. If you do develop a skin rash, avoid any chemical irritants that may irritate the skin, use unperfumed products, and also um, sun can sensitize the skin, so use Factor 50 sunblock throughout your treatment and for at least six months afterwards. Sometimes immunotherapy can cause inflammation in the lungs. The medical name for this is pneumonitis, and that can feel like uh, you feel short of breath, you might have a cough, particularly a dry cough, or even sometimes some chest pains. 
And again, that's very important to let the clinical team know if you've noticed a change in your breathing. This is usually something that we can treat, often with a course of steroid medication. Immunotherapy can also affect the endocrine system, which is a number of glands that produce hormones or chemicals that regulate different things within your body, such as the pancreas, the adrenal gland, the thyroid gland or the pituitary gland. You might not experience any side effects or be aware that the immunotherapy has affected those. However, we will be monitoring you very regularly with blood tests before every treatment to ensure that your hormones or the endocrine system is functioning well. But if you do get serious side effects, we do want to be aware of them. And serious side effects would be things like severe headaches, um, blurred vision. If you're feeling tired, just generally unwell, if you feel dizzy when you stand up, for example, that would be something that your clinical team would need to know about. Immunotherapy can cause inflammation in the liver or the kidneys. In the liver, we call this hepatitis. And this, most of the time, would be something that we pick up on a blood test. And sometimes we would need to treat this with steroid medication to make sure that we could continue to give treatment safely. Immunotherapy can cause inflammation in the joints. It's okay to take the normal painkillers that you might normally take. And if your symptoms are very severe, it's sometimes beneficial to have a short course of steroids to see if that improves symptoms. And lots of these side effects are really, really manageable. So even if you think this is probably nothing, it's important to let us know because we can work out whether it's related to your treatment. So contacting the helpline, speaking to your CNS or asking your doctor are all options. But the important thing is to ask. If there's something on your mind, something that's bothering you, and you might think to yourself, I don't know whether this is urgent or not, phone the number that's on your alert card and that takes you through to your acute oncology team. And there's always somebody that can speak to you 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. Um, and they liaise very closely with your clinical team. The nurse goes down through a whole host of side effects that you might get from treatment and then grades them. And depending on how severe your symptoms are is to what plan the nurse will suggest for you. Sometimes that means coming to A&E, but not always. You might be able to come to clinic, so we can assess you there. Or we might direct you to a local hospital so you don't have to travel. The important thing is that we get you seen so we can see what's going on and then decide whether you need any treatment or not. As well as your clinical team, there are other people within the hospital who also want to hear how you're getting on with your treatment. You'll remember having met your clinical nurse specialist at the beginning of your cancer journey. And most likely within your hospital, there will be a cancer support centre. You'll find somebody like me who's always here to listen to what you're going through and may be able to help you by offering some of those handy hints and tips that only people who have been through the kind of treatment you're having before you are able to share. We can give you up-to-date information about how to cope with what's going on and we can also help put you in touch with patients who have been through what you're going through. But please be reassured, majority of patients tolerate treatment really well and side effects are likely to be mild and very manageable. And once you've completed your treatment, it's not goodbye. You have us if you need us. August of 2018, I was diagnosed with bowel cancer. I, I thought that my life is coming to an end. Then my oncologist came up with a proposal to try an immunotherapy treatment that had been very successful with other forms of cancer. At the beginning, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it would be like chemo. Um, I thought that I would have all the reactions that I saw my mother have, and I haven't had them. Immunotherapy kickstarts your immune system. It's like the immune system has been uh, looking in the opposite direction and not noticed the mutating cells that then became the cancer. I was a bit worried of going into a very intense treatment. But physically, the side effects were relatively moderate on me. So mainly very dry skin, very dry mouth. But it didn't really affect my capacity to work or affect my day-to-day my -day life. I had no side effects apart from I started to get 
skin irritation. And I just started itching. I couldn't understand why um, I suddenly had this reaction because I, you know, I'd never had a reaction before. And why now after about six months? And apparently it happens. I was given medication. And then after that, as easy as it came, it just went. You're on a pathway that other people have been on. And all of these side effects have been dealt with previously. It's easy to, to panic. But actually, you can think about things that might happen, but you should probably think about things that might not happen. And that, you know, puts you in a more positive frame of mind. What one has to realise is that everybody's case is different. The way you will react to the treatment is, cannot be and will not be the way anyone else will react to the treatment. I also thought that searching the internet for information was unhelpful. For me, it was important that any information or any queries that I had, I needed to direct them to the clinical team. The best information that you can ever have is from your doctor and from your team. The degree of monitoring and care that the doctors bring is um, incredible. Anything I felt or saw, there was someone I could call very quickly to just check that something wasn't alarming. I take great comfort in knowing that my family care, that they you know, support me when they know I've got a treatment. And I think it really helps. Something that I really, really appreciated is uh, the Macmillan Buddy Programme. Essentially, Macmillan matches a buddy and someone affected by cancer. So it can be a cancer patient or someone who had cancer in the past or someone who has relatives who are affected by cancer. I, I have a partner, um, but I think it was important for me to have this sort of objective person with whom I was able to just have a vent about things. So it's important to know that there are lots and lots of charities and, and support groups that are really, really helpful. Lots of people talk about a battle with cancer, you know, a fight with cancer. I've lived with cancer and I'm living with cancer. I think a positive attitude is absolutely necessary. Don't look at the disease as, as if it's like life ending or life changing. I think the side effects are very, very manageable and obviously very treatable. And so far, as I said, I've had really good news. It does work. Two years ago, um, I thought I was going to die within months and I'm alive now. You know, and immunotherapy has gifted this to me. It's enabled my body to do the job that it was intended to do. The immune system remembers what it has to do and it does it.